Good evening, Slashaholics, and welcome to episode number 23 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. I'm Alex Vanover, and I've got some breaking news. And I'm Josh LaRue. Whoa! <laughs> He's back! Welcome Glad back. Glad to be back. This is awesome. So happy. Man, that was like a wrestling entrance out of nowhere, dude. You came through the crowd. <laughs> just popped through them. Just... Yeah, but it was like the 70s. You had no theme music, though. <laughs> I just had to, like, see you show up. That was like actual storytelling. Like, they didn't have to. They, your Titantron uh, picture didn't pop up. You didn't hear the, the bagpipes? No, I didn't hear the glass break, and then the bagpipes hit. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not doing it solo this week. Hell yeah. That was, that was a good show. I enjoyed watching that. You did great. That was fun. You know, the, um, hardest part, the hardest part about that was trying to react off of myself. That's not easy. <laughs> That's not, it's not the most fun yeah. thing. This is already better. You find uh, yourself funny too much. It's like, eh, I don't know. Oh, get out of here. I know you're secretly like, this show better not do well. I do, I, this no. show would suck. <laughs> I don't want any views for this fucking show. I felt so bad not being a part of it, but uh, I'm so glad to be back. I just want to say thank you to everybody for all the kind words and uh, taking part in the fundraiser. I really appreciate it. I'm on the mend. I had a few little issues, but for the most part, I'm back, I'm back to normal. So Did I'm the happy. doctor... Did the doctor tell you that uh, your hair played a part in your recovery? Yes, yes. Uh, it actually grew even longer uh, to 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 heal me. They needed they needed the natural nutrients out of just how luscious my hair is. And they wrapped uh, your whole body in your hair <laughs> like a sarcophagus, like an ancient Egyptian mummy. Instead of wraps, though, in gauze, it was just your hair. You know, I'm actually considering cutting it uh, before summer. So. Maybe I'll get a pole or something. What? I, well, you're finally starting to look like Tommy, the Green Ranger, and you're going to blow it. Yeah, it, it really upset me that uh, this is something I always wanted to do. Yeah. And I finally do it, and I always wanted to do it because of Tommy, and then he passed away. That was really hard. That, that sucked. Um, I'm yeah. curious to see who the Green Ranger is going to be in the 30th anniversary because... I don't know if you know this or if you have it on your list or anything. Yeah. His daughter, his real life daughter, Jason David Frank's real life daughter, wants the Power Rangers to cast her as Tommy's daughter in some story at some point to bring closure to Tommy Oliver's story uh, with her taking over the, the Master Morpher. Uh, I think green, white, red. I think that's a cool idea. Um, I'm not against it. Um, does she have any martial arts training? Does she have any acting background? I know she sings. I don't know about acting, but I know that he, I think she's a black belt. I think he trained her. Okay. Um, the person that I, that, since you asked me who I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Johnny Young Bosch. I think yeah, it's going to be he was, Adam. He was, the, yeah, he was the green Zio, the, the rectangle. And he's also one of the most decorated Rangers. And Zach is back, and he was the original Black Ranger. You're not going to have two Black Rangers. And so either Johnny Young Bosch gets the you know the Green Ranger powers, or um, it's just a flashback, or or it's actual actually Tommy Oliver. Yeah. But it, they never show him without his you know mask on. Yeah. And he does like a they do a voice thing, you know. Yeah, I mean that would they, that would be great. It could be any number of things, or they could even say that he went to the youth summit, the youth teen summit with uh, the, for 2023, like the red, yellow, and black ranger did when they got rid of him in season two. He, he, but this time, Tommy's going to the adult teen summit, <laughs> or so that's where he's going. Or they bring Tommy and Trini back from the past, you know, uh, to help with the battle. I think Trini is, I think in this storyline, she's definitely gone because they cast her daughter. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. she's Trini's long gone. Well, uh, you know that R. David. Not only is his thirtieth anniversary thing coming out, but David Yost released the first episode script of what he wanted to make before Jason passed away. I did. Where, I he and it was listed under like fan fiction. He it was like his pitch or something. He was going to try to get it made. Right. The quantum continuum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that on his Twitter. Uh, it's a good read. It would have been I was, great. I was just talking 
to Nicole, uh, my girlfriend, Mother Evil, for all of you who watch <laughs> Slash Tracks, you know, spoiler alert, Mother Evil is my actual girlfriend. Uh, I was going to say, I was telling her when I saw the preview for the, the new Power Rangers thing on Netflix, it's just, what horrible timing. You yeah. know, it's like, they finally get this thing made, and it's like, well... No, Jason David Frank, unfortunately, uh, passed away. And it's like, she was like, well, you know, did he have to be in it? Or could it someone else have played him? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, that he is like the Michael Jordan of the Power Rangers. He is like the guy. He was a uh, trickster, though, man. He was a trickster. So, I mean, there is like this small chance that he was full of crap. Just trying to, you know, keep the keep it secret or something. He might be on there. You never know. Um, Wait, you mean that, like, maybe he already filmed his stuff? Yeah. It, you know, it's totally possible because I had that same thought. I didn't think of it in the terms of him being a trickster, but I definitely thought of it in the terms of, like, production time. Um, y you know, that it's coming out very, very soon, and he, Jason passed away a couple months ago, so it's like he could have easily filmed some of his scenes before he passed. Or recorded audio for it. You know? Any of that stuff. And he was also one of the things about Jason David Frank that made him so uh, beloved by fans of Power Rangers was the fact that he was so he never shied away from the role. He embraced it. And he definitely would have been like if David Yost would have said, hey, can you record some lines for me or can you do this? Uh, he would have done it. He would have done it. I promise you he would have done it. Yeah, I think if he didn't. He's been on Power Rangers so much that there's so much unused audio because they record all the Ranger talking stuff. It's all it's not even them in the costume half the time. Um, so yeah. there's a lot of a lot of recordings they could use. They could say his character was destroyed, you know, and this is them, you know, the whole Rita robot thing or something might have destroyed Tommy. You never know. This could be. They could bring him back from the past or something, use the old audio clips. I don't know. It's going to be fun. The Green Ranger is definitely in it, and I'm curious to see what kind of tribute they pay to Tommy because you know they're going to. There's going to be something for him in training. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. But you know what else I'm looking forward to, Josh? Mean I'm, comment, nice comment? No, I'm not even getting into that yet. I want to get into some channel business real quick. I'm looking forward to people getting a hold of us at slashtracks2020 at gmail.com, Josh, and I'll tell you why. Yes, we're looking for companies to sponsor with us and to hopefully, uh, you know, be the title sponsor for upcoming episodes of Slash Tracks, Slash Tracks News, Slash Tracks Rants, Slash Tracks Reviews, Trash Tracks, whatever. That's all good and dandy. So if you are a company, you like what you see, write us at Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, give us a pitch. Maybe we'll fit. Maybe we'll fit in together. Maybe we'll do some work together in the future. What I want uh, to get accomplished in this little plug real, real quick, Josh, is we have a new segment coming up, and instead of Dear Abby, it's going to be called Dear Slashy. Uh, Josh and I would love for the Slashaholics to write us at the email or leave it in the comments below and ask us a question. Uh, do you, we're going to try to give you our very best advice. So if you guys have questions about your love life, your financial life, your job life, your personal life, whatever, Josh and I will pick the very best questions from each week, and we'll try to answer them in slash tracks form. Josh, what do you think about that? I've been, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Did something similar to that like two or three years ago where I like did the voice of Freddie and somebody played Jason and it was like, but this is, this, this is different. This is going to be like a bi-weekly uh, thing with me and Alex, so we'd love to get your questions. Anything you want to ask, we will answer it. We mean yeah. anything, anything. Yeah. yeah, and we will give you our our. We will pull from our vast knowledge and life experience to help you make the very best decision you can because we love the slashaholics. <laughs> and Josh, we also need them to write in at slash tracks two thousand twenty at gmail dot com because we have a v brand new segment. So we have that new segment coming up next week, but we have a brand spanking new breaking news segment that we're going to debut in this show today josh and it is called would you rather okay, okay. and basically josh and i are going to debate one question each week would we rather would we rather do a or would we rather do b and we're going to tell you why 
And it's going to be funny. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And hopefully it creates some dialogue and some comments down below in the chat. And if we get some good uh, comments, some good uh, suggestions for future episodes, maybe we will include your Would You Rather in, a, in an, ep an episode coming your way. How about that? Let's do it. Send, us, All right. send it to us, guys. Check it out. See what you think. Send us your ideas. Josh, before we get into mean comment, good comment, into the actual meat of the show, Josh, can you give us a Patreon plug real quick? Yes. Go to patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian, and you can support the channel for as low as a dollar a month, all the way up to 50. Uh, you'll be helping keep the channel going and growing for years to come. We cannot monetize the channel, A, because of all the copyright content on the channel, uh, and B, because uh, YouTube likes to... Uh, uh, what's a nice way of saying it? Screw over content creators and force them into doing stuff that isn't them, you know? Uh, yeah, they like the to cut... YouTube likes to cut your balls off. Uh, so basically, so. Josh and I couldn't be 100% of our actual personalities, which I think Josh's personality at 100% and my personality at 100% is what makes anything we do successful. So if yes. you start t if you start neutering that... You know, I'm not in my in my opinion. Josh and I have discussed this. We're not going to neuter ourselves for money. No. So, uh, you know, this, it's not the downside. Happen. The downside to that is there's no monetization for the channel. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to support the channel and you enjoy what we do, uh, Patreon is the best way. There's also uh, I put it up on the community page pretty often. A QR code for PayPal if you ever just want to tip the show. Uh, I'll put it on the screen during this episode. If you want to scan that, it's real easy. Uh, we appreciate any contributions, and we appreciate everybody watching. Uh, we're going to have some cool Patreon content. Um, I think our Slash Tracks Express episodes are going to drop on there early. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just re we just recorded. This is also breaking news. We got a lot of new stuff uh, coming at you in this episode. Josh and I just recorded the very first episode of Slash Tracks News Express. So it's basically a very short and quick version of the news show. And it could be two, it's two segments and they're shorter. It could be horror and headlines. It could be fun facts and sports. It could be anything. So it, it rotates. It could be one and one or one and one. You just have to tune in to see what it is. It's going to drop on Patreon early. Uh, a little bit of incentive to maybe join the Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, then you get access to all that fun stuff. Um, Josh, let's get into mean comment. Nice comment. Oh boy. Do we have any mean ones? Yeah, we do have some mean ones. And the, and the, the mean comment is kind of a personal shot at you and I hate this person. So, but you, you said to leave it up. So yeah, it's because we, we hadn't gotten very many mean comments. We don't really get mean comments anymore, but, uh, when we do, we're actually excited because we need them to fill this segment up. <laughs> so here we go. First, nice comment of the show. And this is uh, regarding Slash Tracks Action News Episode 22. This is the episode I did, you know, unfortunately, without Josh. Sorry, Josh. About that. Stop, knocking, stop knocking shit over, Josh. Uh, he, Josh must have been looking for a piece of cheese in the middle of the night. Uh, we, we talk about uh, him looking for cheese uh, like someone would look for heroin on the episode of Slash Tracks Express. Go ahead and uh, that's, a little, that's a little teaser right there. <laughs> Just a little, little teaser. All right, here we go. Nice comment. You did a fantastic job. Doing a one-man podcast can't be easy. I'm sorry your friend has been sick. And he's referring to Josh, obviously. And I'm sorry also because I was really, really, really uh, affected and bummed and sad about that. It was a horrible situation to have my friend be like that. And no, I couldn't do anything for you. It sucked. Uh, and that's from Bill Jahan Kose. And I probably butchered the shit out of that name. And that's on Slash Tracks uh, Action News episode 22. So I want to say thank you for those you. really kind words. Um, here's a mean comment. And this is the only mean comment of the episode. This is, And this is butchered. I actually, <laughs> you've seen the comment, Josh. Oh, is I this have, the one that, you, that they misspell everything? Yeah, everything is misspelled. And punctuation is all over the place. He's using numbers where exclamation points should be. Um, good riddance. And Riddens is spelled R-I-D-E-N-C-E. -E. Maybe he want instead of he won't get better. And better isn't B-E-T-T-E-R. It's B-E-D-E-R. Uh, reading books as a channel is dumb. And instead of D-U-M-B, it's D-U-M-M. -M. And this is from H-F 
78. And this is regarding Slash Tracks News episode 22. So instead of uh, just saying, you know, nice job, solo podcast, he decided to say good riddance, maybe Josh won't get better. So, yeah. Josh, what do you I'm think better. about it? Yeah, well, he, better, is better. he is better. He is better. Well, yeah, go fuck yourself. Uh, thank you, as we always say. Thanks for leaving a comment. Thanks for checking us out. I mean, if you hate the show enough to watch the show and then leave a comment, hey, man, uh, you could have worse haters. They could just lurk and uh, not watch the show, click off, uh, have no retention rate, and leave no comments. But this guy's actually helping us out. So thanks, man. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an absolute idiot. Um, good, good, good redents to that. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's move on to a better, better comment. All right. Nice comment. Dude, I loved all of this. Uh, exclamation point. And that's from our homeboy, Michael Clark. And that's on Slash Tracks, number 33, Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010. So the brand new episode of Slash Tracks is out. It's on the channel. It's over 15,000 views. It's going up. Likes just went up right before we started to record. So that usually means a lot of views are coming in. Just got a lot of really cool, nice comments. But unfortunately, the show was already written. I couldn't include those yet. So probably next week. Uh, but yeah, our boy Michael Clark. The Slash Tracks fan of fans. The number one guy. If I was Joker, Michael Clark would be my number one. My number one guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, I probably wouldn't kill him. It, like, a J Joker kills his number one guy in the, in the movie. But, yeah, Michael Clark, big ups, dude. Thank you. Those are my All right. balloons. Yeah. Uh, here, yeah, those are my balloons. Where does Michael Clark get these wonderful toys? Uh, Thank had you, me Michael. You're awesome, Mikey. Seriously. We Two more nice you. comments. Oh, wow. Had me, had, yeah, I just want, well, we haven't been together for like a month and a half, so I wanted to kind of fill it up a little bit. Uh, had me laughing. Very entertaining. You're made for this, guys. And that's from Venera Music, uh, or Music, and that's on Slash Tracks News episode number 19. So we had oh, him wow. laughing the, the whole show. Super entertaining. And uh, you and I are made for this. Of course we are. That's what yeah, we were take, created for. <laughs> so to do this show, that is why. It was predestined in the stars. Um, ancestors, our ancestors, uh, our what, what, not ancestors. Yeah, ancestors, people long ago, yeah. right? Okay, our our, descendants. Yeah, we were, yeah, the descendants are later. Well, I guess I am a dumbass. That guy in the comments was correct. Um, no, our ancestors foretold of the slash tracks coming. And we are fulfilling the prophecy of bringing humor and useless information to the masses via the internet. So... Here we are. Uh, Venera Music. Thank you. Last. Can I, can, huh? I, can I point something out real quick? I use uh, Skype virtual background. And yeah. my hair is so awesome that the background thinks that it's not real. And it's like a hat. So it's trying to cut my hair out of the screen here. Like over here. <laughs> That's a, that is the ultimate compliment, dude. Good for you. <laughs> so what's, um, the, what's, the, what's the last nice one? Last nice comment of the show, dude. Uh, you two put on a great show. Keep it up. I love your chemistry. So, and that's from oh. Swin, exclamation point, and that is also on Slash Tracks News, episode number 19. Thank you. Thanks, Swin. Um, let's cut to the chase, Josh. Let's get into the fun facts. You ready? I'm ready. All right, Always ready for fun facts. All right, buckle up. All right. Drivers of luxury cars such as BMW and Mercedes-Benz, tend to be less considerate of others on the road. And this is according to a study from UC Berkeley. Thoughts? Concerns? I have one. <laughs> What's yours? I can't stop for these fuckers. I'm too <laughs> rich and way too important to stop for these people. I can't yield for this. I can't yield for this poor bastard. I'm rich. <laughs> I'm very important. I cannot stop. I am going to do a California stop here because I am rich and more important. Look at my car. I didn't get rich being a good Samaritan. I got rich being a fucking asshole. So. I know where <laughs> I my bread is buttered. <laughs> I can't obey the rules of the road. I'm driving a Beamer. <laughs> That's what I thought. I just immediately saw some asshole. Um, <laughs> fish can suffer from depression, Josh. I've heard that. That's something I think I've actually heard. How do um, they know that? I don't know. It's like 30 seconds later, they forget it, though. Yeah. Know? God, man. they got maybe, maybe 
Maybe that's why they're depressed, you know, it's because they, they can never remember anything, you know? No, they're depressed, Josh, because people are literally trying to trick them into eating shit that have massive hooks in them. Yeah, uh, day to day. Me. Yeah, every some day. The, yeah. No, what does it bug you? Go ahead. Some of the bait is like stuff that they they never see, you know? And it's like, how many worms are out in the middle of a, a river, honestly, before fishermen? Uh, you know, in their natural habitat habitat down there, or crawfish, or whatever, you know, like yeah. in the deep part. Uh, maybe if fish, is, fish weren't so dumb, uh, I call fish dumb after I say fishes, um, maybe if they weren't so dumb, they wouldn't be so depressed, you know, quit, quit, quit going after uh, shit that's not supposed to be in the water, and you won't get caught. Well, how would you feel, Josh, if somebody constantly like had Mountain Dews and Crystal Clear Pepsis on hooks and they just kept showing up on your desk and shit. Like, how would you, and you keep getting hooked in your mouth. How would you feel? You'd be pretty depressed too. Yeah, I'd be pretty depressed. So. You're being a I, pompous asshole right now by making that. Do you drive a BMW, Josh? With yes. that comment? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any. I could drive concern. a Ford Mustang. So. Yeah, I don't have any concern for these fish and their feelings. <laughs> I drive a Beamer. Fuck them. Get over it, fishes. Yeah, get over it. You're a fish. I am rich. I am a rich uh, person. Now, if a fish is depressed because its woman left him, does his yeah. buddy say there's plenty of women on the land? <laughs> like, what does he say? I don't know. Plenty of fish in the sea doesn't sound right, you know? It's like uh, there's plenty of, plenty of females over on the grass or something. I don't know. You know. Uh, dude, you know what I do know? In ancient Greece, Josh, small penises were preferred over large ones. And a small penis was seen as a symbol of self-control and intelligence. You know, I thought I saw a hieroglyphic one time that looked just like you. And it was like wearing a crown. <laughs> with an extremely small uh, staff. With an extremely small ween. That you know, was me. You know how you yeah. can tell which Egyptian kings had the uh, smallest ones? Huh. They had the biggest pyramids. Yeah, they were yeah, they were compensating. Overcompensation. Yeah, like make that pyramid bigger, taller, <laughs> bigger. God damn it! You gotta make it bigger. Make the pyramid bigger. Okay, we all love the big pyramids, don't we, people? Trump just got uh, unbanned from Twitter. Did you see that? <laughs> oh yeah, it was a few. Okay, so he did a poll to do that, yeah. and it was like fifty-one to forty-nine, and then a poll asking if he should step down as CEO, and it was like overwhelmingly yes, and he still hasn't stepped down. So he kind of picks and chooses which polls he honors. Yeah, uh, I did I did see that. He didn't step down. He just kind of disregarded it. Um, so Trump is reinstated on that, and I think Trump got reinstated on Facebook? Facebook, with guardrails. Like, if, yeah. he, if he says one thing wrong, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> He's got bumpers. No more, no more insight and insurrections. Stop it. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> He's got life bumpers. Like when kids go bowling, they don't want to throw it in the gutter. Trump has actual bumpers on his mouth. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Josh, a type of frog called the whore frog <laughs> will break its own bones to make claws uh, out of the broken bones and use them as weapons. That is awesome. That's like saw stuff, man. Like, like and, somebody in a saw trap... Uh, I would have sworn somebody did that, like used a bone or something to, maybe it was Walking Dead, I can't remember. I but saw, there was something like that where somebody like made a weapon out of their own fucking bone. I saw an episode of Mr. Ballin, uh, which is a really popular YouTube channel, obviously. Uh, if you're watching YouTube, you're probably familiar with him right now. Uh, he tells cra uh, crazy stories of the strange, dark, and mysterious variety. And anyway, there was this guy who got his arm stuck behind a boulder. And after, like, so many days, he was like, well, my arm is basically dead. So he, like, cut his arm off, I think, with, like, a pocket knife and saved his own life. But they made a movie out of it and everything. This is, like, kind of a well-known story. Uh, he didn't make a weapon out of his arm, his nub, but he did cut his arm off. Would you, do you, yeah. would, would you be able to cut your own arm off if you had to? I think, I think I've got the survival instinct. So I think I'd, I'd do something. I wouldn't just sit there and die. No, um, man. I don't know, man. I, I obviously we've never been in that situation, but that would be a really tough call. But I, if your arm is already dead and black and blue and, and rotting, I guess you got to do what you got to do. I think the hardest thing about that would be cutting through bone with a pocket knife. Can you imagine? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
least he's got the rock right there to sharpen it, you know. I get. Oh yeah, he's got. A... <laughs> um, I'm dark. I got a dark sense of humor. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> hey. Uh, medical situation did not make me see the lights. I'm sorry. Yeah, you've gotten worse. Um, you got more perverted, more dark, more, more. <laughs> yeah, you want to hear something that should have got me canceled? Listen to uh, towards the end of our slash tracks riff on uh, uh, not run Elm Street. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, somebody man. commented about it and said they they spat their drink out uh, during that part. So I saw uh, I, I saw that. And I um I had a flashback. I was like, <laughs> I looked like Raven, and that's so Raven when she's about ready to have a vision. <laughs> Remember on That's So Raven when Raven would have, like, she could see the future, and all of a sudden she looked like this, Josh? <laughs> uh, hey, in January 2019, a Florida man named Brian Stewart was fighting with his neighbors when he promised to kill him with kindness. So Brian Stewart was going to kill him with kindness. He then immediately pulled out a machete that he had named Kindness and tried to kill them. <laughs> That's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good shit. You see, this this is the last person that I killed with kindness right here, just hanging out with us here. So. Oh fuck! Yeah. Dead man walking. That was the last guy who left a truly mean comment uh, down below. Yeah, that, uh, that was the '70s slasher librarian right there. So. <laughs> he did. Yeah, the '70s slasher librarian wasn't actually ready to retire. Josh just took the mantle, <laughs> staged a coup. I love uh, the uh, the guy from. Uh, Gremlins. Like, oh my god, I can't think of his name right now. I've got a freaking shout out from him. Um, Zach Galligan? Zach, uh, Zach Galligan. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. At the, yeah, thank you. Uh, he, uh, at the end of his little shout out for the channel, he's like, about your nickname, I don't know if you're a librarian from the 80s or if you're a slasher <laughs> librarian, a librarian that kills people. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, um, all right, so we got two more fun facts before we get into the next segment. All right, male ducks, Josh, grow larger penises when they live near competing males. Well, they wouldn't be very popular in ancient Egypt, so. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> what, how big did Donald's du Donald, Donald Duck's dick try to grow when he was around Scrooge with all that money? <laughs> did he feel... Like, there's had to have been some sort of competition between them two. It's like, oh. first of all, Scrooge is raising Donald's kids, but they aren't Donald's <laughs> kids because they call him Uncle Donald. So who is Huey, Dewey, and Louie's real father, by the way? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Maybe, maybe, uh, no, I don't know who it is. I don't know. Who the hell? They never address it. It's like Uncle Donald is their uncle, and he's dropping the kids off with Uncle Scrooge. Who the yeah, fuck? Brothers. So who's, yeah. the, who's the third brother? Daffy Duck? Is he like? Who is the dad? Yeah. He's, he's running around with the Beagle Boys. His life totally went astray. There was an ice cream bar back in the 80s and into the early 90s for DuckTales, and it was a Huey, Dewey, and Louie bar. It was huge. It was like one of those great white shark bars. Yeah. It had all three of them, like, conjoined, like if they were a conjoined triplet. Um, Did it have ice cream in the middle and, like, kind of fruit on the outside? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, rem I remember the Disney ice cream bars being really good. Oh, yeah. Remember the popsicles that were shaped like the characters? And they yes. had uh, yeah. cream in the middle, and then they yeah. had the Mickey Mouse bar. They have Mickey Mouse bars now, but they're not the same. Uh, back in the day, it had, like, a round white. It was the face of Mickey Mouse with white ice cream. The eyes were chocolate, like chocolate ice cream. The ears were chocolate ice cream with chocolate shell on them. Those, mm -hmm. those were amazing. And the ice cream sandwiches were good, too. God, um, breaking news. We need to stop recording right now because I want a fucking Mickey Mouse ice cream sandwich. They don't make them good anymore. I bought the ice cream sandwich, the, the cookie one at Walmart that's shaped like Mickey Mouse now, and it's yeah. not good. It's not the same. It's like light ice cream. It was a shitter. And then the shell one is like just a white Mickey Mouse shape with chocolate shell on it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just not the same, man. It's never the same. They, they got to go change it. Just like the WWE um, ice cream sandwiches. They're supposed to be just like the old ice cream bars. Um, but they're not like, yeah. it's just not the same. It, everything just changes. All the good shit that tasted good back then turned out to be really bad for us. So they take it out of everything. Yeah. They take they the stuff it. that's actually good in it. Yeah. And they re like the McChicken, uh, the 1980s and early nineties McChicken sandwich that they would cook in beef tallow, uh, was <laughs> just exquisite. And the McChicken now is pretty good, but 
Not even close to the 1980s. Chicken Nuggets back then, man. They had brown and white meat in them. Those were yeah. better than the all white meat. <laughs> yeah, they had the Even grade, this is different. They had grade F meat uh, in the McNuggets. Uh, they had circus <laughs> animal and filler in some of them. <clears throat> yeah, they were pretty good. Hey, Josh, last fun fact of the show here. Okay. Sex is viewed as a basic human right in the Netherlands. Citizens with disabilities can get government funding to pay for sexual assistance up to 12 times a year. So, okay. so who do you have a caseworker you meet with? <laughs> they're like, I don't know if you like when you get a food card or you get insurance from the state. Uh, they're like, well, let's see here. How much do you make? You know, per month. You know, you've already got the food card. You're already getting health insurance. Uh, yeah, we could fit in 11, 10 or 11 orgasms in there into the into your plan too, your policy. Uh, we how do they get your paperwork though? Pants who, down. <laughs> who do they deem is disabled? How do they? That is a very wide and generalized term. How Sexually do they disabled? No, because they're trying to have sex. They're like. They're just like the guy who's evaluating the case. He's like, all right, Josh, you're here to try to get some of the free orgasm money, free sex money. Let me take a look at you here. You are quite unfortunate looking, yes. Uh, you seem to have no charisma whatsoever. And your clothes are quite shabby. I feel like your odds of having sex without my government assistance is almost impossible, Josh. <laughs> I'm going to take my big wait, rubber. Wait, wait. Hey, taking my big rubber stamp here. <laughs> Approved. <laughs> the big rubber stamps like. Rrr, 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 rrr. Uh, so, but first, we we also need you to drop your pants. Oh, you're a descendant of an Egyptian king. Okay. Yeah, you're definitely so. approved. You're definitely approved. Um, they're like the people that are against the extra government money being you know uh, distributed for the people who can't have sex. They're like. They're like, oh, we're paying for their food. We're paying for their health insurance. Now we got to pay for their orgasms. Oh, okay. That fucking yeah, I want to hear that, that, here. those talking points. <laughs> Next on CNN. Netherlands man uh, can't pay for his own food or orgasms. More <laughs> at 11. And it's like breaking on the bottom there. <laughs> All right, Josh. Let's get into some Slash Tracks sports. Joy. This is what I've been waiting for ever since I've... <laughs> Been gone. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's let's do it, Josh. <laughs> what do we got? All right. Super Bowl Sunday. The big game is this Sunday, Josh. Chiefs versus the Eagles. All right. Here's a here's a quick stat. The Kansas City Chiefs record this year, 16 and 3. They've scored 546 points. They have six all pro players, including a Kelsey brother. And their quarterback, uh oh yeah, six all pro players, including a Kelsey brother and their quarterback. So their quarterback is also included as one of the six All-Pros, and one of the Kelsey brothers is included in the six All-Pros. And they are the AFC's number one seed. The Philadelphia Eagles, their opponent, 16-3 and record, 546 points scored, so same as the Chiefs. They also have six All-Pros, including a Kelsey brother and their quarterback, and they are the NFC's number one seed. They're exactly evenly matched to a T, down to each having a Kelsey brother. And also, Josh, this is the first Super Bowl ever where a mother, Donna Kelsey, will have two sons playing against each other in the Super Bowl. So no matter what happens, one of her kids is winning the Super Bowl. Oh, that's cool. They're going to Disneyland no matter what. Disney World. Oh, for sure. One of them's going to be poopy pants the entire time, but he'll be at Disney World, and maybe Don't he'll have... talk a... about me. Stop talking about me. <laughs> One of the Kelsey brothers is going to win the Super Bowl. One's going to lose the Super Bowl. But they're going to be at Disney World, so they're going to have access probably to the secret good Mickey Mouse ice cream treats. Yeah. You're, right? God dang it. Yes. That's all That's yeah. all that matters is the ice cream, man. Damn it. Yeah. They're going to get it. Yeah. Second they're going to they're they're be able to ask who, who he doing Louie's father is, too. They're going to have access to the Disney vaults. They're going to find out who the, the triplets kids re father really is pluto pluto's their dad <laughs> <laughs> the ghost, ghost. It's probably fucking gizmo duck <laughs> or, uh, and sky launch pad darkwing duck let's get dangerous yeah probably launch back hey mr mcd oh crash what are you playing are you playing again huh? um 
All right. Not human services took my kids away and gave them to Donald. <laughs> Launchpad is a pilot for Scrooge. He's got like pilot goggles on, pilot cap, because there's wind, you know, whatever. He's got a big leather jacket on, no pants. So if he gets in a plane <laughs> wreck, lost the kids. <laughs> yeah, no pants. So if he gets in a plane wreck, which he does every episode, the wind is just ripping his duck penis off. Uh, <laughs> like he he know he obviously knows what PPE is. He wears it on the top topper part of his body, but not the lower part. Whatever. Uh, second sports story of the night here. Okay. Only five Olympic athletes have ever won more than eight gold medals. So if you win a gold medal, you're the best in the world. Five have ever won more than eight. Four of them have won nine, so half of, or no, not five, four. <laughs> four have won nine. Michael Phelps, the great swimmer, U.S. swimmer, he's won 23 gold medals. So, wow. holy crap. That is that is fucking nuts. 23 and he gold medals. SNL. J- Michael Phelps is one of my favorite athletes, and I'll tell you why. He had a drinking problem, a very well-known and highly publicized drinking problem. Uh, and he was very upfront and honest about it. I had a drinking problem. Uh, I guess you could say I still have a drinking problem, even though I'm sober. And I'm in, you know, almost eight years alcohol-free. I guess if I started drinking again, it'd probably come right back. Because <laughs> I, when I drank, I really liked it. Uh, that's probably why I had a big problem with it, because I couldn't stop. But anyway, Michael Phelps was upfront and honest about his issues. He tried to be a... Um, like a champion for the situation, talked about depression, talked about anxiety. And uh, it was really refreshing to hear somebody, especially someone that successful, uh, talk about a, a real human problem. Because sometimes celebrities don't want to talk about that sort of stuff. They want to hide their true humanness. So yeah. he was using his uh, platform for good. So, you know, pretty. I like Michael Phelps. I, I think that's good on him, man. Sounds like a good guy. I've heard about him. I saw him on Saturday Night Live. He seemed pretty cool. Pretty yeah, down to earth. Dude, 23 gold medals, though. I mean, uh, to, that's ridiculous. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. nuts, man. Uh, let's get into the last sports story of the episode. I know you're excited, Josh. All right. For the first time ever, the NBA All-Star Draft, so all the players that were selected to the NBA All-Star teams, uh, is going to take place right before the actual All-Star game. So the team captains of the All-Star teams are going to draft and select the players for their teams from the pool of All-Stars that were voted on as starters and reserves in each conference. So, like, say LeBron's a captain and Giannis Antetokounmpo's a captain. Right before the game, Josh, they're going to pick who they want on their team. My question, wow. this is the first time that's ever happened. This is like schoolyard shit. My question to you, Josh, yeah. these all-stars are the okay. best players in the NBA, okay? So there's like 24 of them. This is the best of the best. If you're the last all-star picked, do you feel like shit, or are you happy you're an all-star? I think it's going to give them issues. <laughs> Just suck. It's cool, you know? Like, you know what? I'm not playing for either one of y'all. Screw y'all. I'm going to go sit on the row and tie and you know, just watch. <laughs> Oh, you don't want me to play for you guys? I'm the last one picked. You're going to embarrass me? Well, I'm not playing. And then the LeBron's like, well, you, you're not going to play anyway because you were obviously the last one picked anyway. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't plan on you playing a lot this game there, pal. <laughs> so, nah, 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 nah. By the way, I'm LeBron. Do you know who Huey Dewey and Louie's dad is? <laughs> I'm the scoring king. I've got pull around here. You got any clue who Huey Dewey and Louie's dad is, huh? Uh, Josh, I was, never, so, I was always picked around middle, you know, I was never last, but I was, dude, I, I was, I got, I was good at sports, but I wasn't like the best at sports, but I was loud and I was fat. So the actual real athletes, I would always be picked pretty close to last, uh, because I was also supremely confident in my abilities. So I would be, <laughs> whenever I got the ball. I was like a black hole, so you're not getting the ball back. So I had a lot of reasons to not pick me. <laughs> <laughs> I had this, like, chip on my shoulder. It's like, you fucker, you didn't pick me. Like, you're not – You, I get this ball, you are not getting it back. So there was a lot of reasons not to pick a young Alex on your team. I love dodgeball, man. That was fun. Uh, yeah, me too. Like- dodgeball was a, was a lot of fun. I actually broke out that tooth right there. That front tooth is glued in. 
uh, diving, trying to get away from a, someone throwing a ball at me. I smashed my face right on the ground. I went face first before I caught myself. Yeah, there was a girl. This is a true story. Uh, this girl named Larissa Scar that I had a crush on in like seventh or eighth grade. I get up. I am aware I hit my face. I didn't know I broke my tooth out yet. And Larissa like points at my tooth. And she's like, hey, Alex, uh, you know, there's your tooth. And I just remember thinking like, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> she told me when my tooth broke out. You sex. And anyway, went to the dentist later on that day to get my fucking tooth glued back in. And I went to the wrong dentist that wasn't covered by my mom's insurance. And we were super poor. So my mom had to like pay like a bigger deductible and like more out of pocket. So not only did I have my tooth broke out and I had to go to the dentist and the girl I liked like helped me find my tooth. Uh, but my mom was also pissed off that we I went to the wrong dentist because I didn't know what dentist to go to. I just like, please take me to this doctor because that's who I went to as like a child. Uh, I didn't know that I was going to this new dentist that was covered on a new shittier health plan that we had. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, That's Josh, not your get... fault. No, it's not my fault. And I probably wasn't thinking straight because I probably had a fucking concussion because I smashed my face on the ground. Exactly. Um, Josh, let's get into Slash Tracks Wrestling. Wrestling. That's what I'm talking about. It's been a minute. Let's get into it. All right, man. So, WWE 2K23, the video game, Josh. Roman Reigns is basically unbeatable on the video game as well. It, not just in real life and in the ring on Raw every Monday night. He is ranked or rated a 99 on the new video game, 2K23. So he's unbeatable. They book him almost uh, like Hulk Hogan in the 80s on this video game as well. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? Uh, you've already heard my joke about the Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins ice cream bars where they, you don't have to buy oh, yeah. them. They just show up and shove them down your throat. Uh, yeah, he he's been saying that he wants to get into movies like his uh, cousin, and I say do it. Uh, I don't think he's a good worker. I don't think he's a good character. I think he's a Mark that grew up watching his cousin and tries to emulate him. I do not like him. I do not like Seth Rollins. Out of all the new people, it's like Cody Rhodes, uh, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, CM Punk, people like that. I think have the right stuff, and most of them are from, like, 15 years ago. Yeah, so. Randy Orton's not new. Uh, I know. And, I'm just saying, like, out of the people that are wrestling right now. All right. Bray yeah, Wyatt, okay. though. Bray Wyatt is awesome. Braun Strowman is good. I like Braun Strowman. All right. Uh, now, I'm going to say something that's totally... I would have agreed with you about Roman from 2015 to 2021, 2020-ish. Yeah. But the work that he's done as the tribal chief uh, has been excellent. Um, some of the stuff that he does on a nightly basis has been just incredible. He is, he's a really good heel. Uh, he was never supposed to be a baby face. It's obvious. He works way better as a heel. The cocky, arrogant, unbeatable, unbeatable heel. Usually heels aren't unbeatable. He's booked as unstoppable and as a bad guy. He has cut some of the best promos that have been not only of his career, but also on the show. He's a really good performer now, Josh. I, I, I think he deserves everything he has now. But he's had both belts for well over a year. I mean, I think maybe we're going towards like two years now. Um, they don't even have separate champions now on Raw and SmackDown. Oh, he's just crazy. been the universal champion forever. Uh one of the stories, so this is another story. So we just talked about Roman being, un, you know, unbeatable in the 2K23, but let's just get into the next story. Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble, right? Yeah. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I'm so old school. Uh, the video games nowadays just seem like the same game every year with, like, the roster updated. It, it is. They And sometimes it's worse. Sometimes they have more glitches because they try to get it out too fast. And they're the, super glitchy. The funnest... <laughs> The most fun I've had with a wrestling game in a long time was, like, the most fun I ever had was back when, like, Here Comes the Pain and stuff was coming out. But SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, it was the first year that they had a GM mode on the game. Oh, yeah, and you could book the show. I would just sit around booking shows. I wouldn't even wrestle the matches half the time, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it was I just, like, that. booking the shows. <laughs> and I'd sit around doing that for hours, uh... I, could, I had everybody unlocked except Jake the Snake. You had to have a Vita or Vita or whatever. You um, had to have the um, 
to get Jake the Snake unlocked in that game, you had to find a bag of cocaine uh, in game <laughs> in gameplay to get him to show up to the meeting to unlock him, <laughs> or or booze. Um, Josh, I tried. Now, I tried 2015. I, I yeah. did try that in 2016. They weren't bad. They weren't bad. Now, Josh, you liked booking the shows on 2006, the video game. Um, now, you have a history, Josh, of real-life pro wrestling, and you actually married the booker uh, in one territory you worked for, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you try to have sex with the actual booker in the 2006 game as well, just to, you know, life imitating reality or, or what? Yeah, or, but Josh? Eric Bischoff kept turning me down, and Ric Flair was like, <laughs> woo! <laughs> you, tried, you tried to sleep with Bischoff. <laughs> You're like, you've got the book, man, and the pen. Come over here, Big Daddy. Come over here, Easy. <clears throat> um, okay, so anyway, from Roman Reigns, from Josh sleeping with the Booker to uh, Jake Roberts needing a bag of cocaine. By the way, we love Jake Roberts. That was just a, that was a low blow. Uh, no disrespect. Everybody knows Jake Roberts had a, a serious uh, backstory history with substance abuse. That's why his redemption story has been so great. Yes. So yeah, Here's no that. disrespect. Tough Bagwell's trying to do the same thing with DDP, and I just I've, I've seen like outtakes from it in the trailer, and I just mm -hmm. don't think he's taking it as serious as Scott Hall and Jake did. I uh, wish I, him all the best. I hope he comes through it, but he he still seems like he's not fully giving himself to it. So. Like you think maybe Buff is just trying to get uh, his brand out there, so he's yeah. trying to just kind of well. I, I hope that's not the case, but maybe it is. Um, I have a little bit of I had a few interactions with Buff Bagwell on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, for the for the most part, they were all positive, uh, and I wish nothing but the best for him. And I know that when he went over to WWE after WCW was purchased by Vince, uh, he didn't really get a fair shake. He had a match. Uh, he was one of the first people to have a match in WWE, and it was an absolute stinker. And uh, the ring they was bigger. I mean, that had to, but the ring is bigger in WWE. Well. Yeah, that and it was harder too. The mats weren't at, ha, didn't have as much give, and also I don't know what Vince and everybody thought they were getting from Buff Bagwell because <laughs> Buff Bagwell is not really a ring technician. He never was. He was more of a character. And towards the end of Buff's run in WCW, he was like the 18th guy in the NWO. All he would do is show up in the ring, and uh, he was like one. He didn't do anything. He just had the yeah. top hat on. He was just one of Hogan's bitches. He was always yeah. in. It was always about bearing WCW and WWE. Um, like when Scott Steiner came in, they had the best heel WCW had had in a long time. And yeah. they put him face. He, they run him as a face against Triple H just so Triple H can bury him. Triple H should have been the face, and Scott Steiner should have come in as the heel. He was so good as a heel, but Triple H didn't want his thunder being stolen. And that whole thing was about burying him. And, you know, Buck Bagwell had his mom call uh, when he wasn't going to make a show. His mom called Jim Ross. That couldn't have helped much. Um, was she on a forklift? A forklift yeah, on a pole forklift. match? She called in and said Buff was sick and he couldn't make it to a show. And that's when he get, Jim Ross fired him. Are you uh, kidding so, me right now? Look it up. It's dead serious. Jim Ross has told the story. Others have told it. Buff Judy Bagwell cannot, called. <laughs> Buff can't wrestle Chris Canyon tonight, Jim. He's sick. Yeah. Uh, I'm heading to 7-Eleven right now to get him some crackers, orange Gatorade, and 7-Up. Price is Right's on in the background. Mm -hmm. Buff can't come to the phone right now. His top hat's on the uh, right on the floor next to the couch. He's throwing up into a coffee can. Um, I was going to say, uh, oh, my God. Um, Triple H and the Scott Steiner thing. You got my mind all over the place. Uh, Scott Steiner, at that point of his career, couldn't even have a match, though. He had no cardio. His, his in-ring work was horrible. Um, he had taken time off from when WCW went out of business. I don't think he directly came over to WWE. He was probably still getting that money from yeah, till his previous it. deal. He wasn't in ring shape. Uh, so it wasn't Hill just... would have been better. He could have worked, you know, worked the crowd more and stuff and not uh, done as much wrestling. Yeah, I don't know. And also, I think Triple H and Scott Steiner are so similar in physique and like in ring style that they don't complement each other. I mean, I would have rather watched Hercules and Ultimate Warrior on a chain match uh, before I watched those guys wrestle. Um, I would rather watch someone wrestle a fucking broomstick than those. Two. Scott Steiner was way past his prime at that point. I wasn't sure. Do you did, have you seen Scott Steiner's chest lately? It's starting it's like, to like, con yeah, it's concave. It's starting to like 
go inwards. Like, and Kofi Kingston has that going on too. Kofi from the New Day, his chest is concave. I'll never um, forgive what they did to Kofi, man. I'll what never. do you mean when they fed him to Brock? Yeah. I mean, it, he didn't I don't deserve know. that. No, he did not deserve it. And Kofi was over. The New Day was wildly over, and they've been over. You know, the New Day was wasn't even supposed to be successful they just threw those guys together and they got it over like yeah. uh they got over a tr- like a trombone was over more over yeah. than almost any wrestler in the promotion look at the bootio shirts and boxes and stuff you know like, oh yeah dude they, new day the champions aren't like they used to be back in the day if you were world champion you were expected to carry the whole company and yeah, it's just you, not like that anymore. No, it's not. It's it's more ba- wrestling today for all the younger slashaholics that are watching the show right now. Wrestling is television based. Back, what Josh is talking about is wrestling used to be uh, live show traveling from city to city based. So if you had a champion, they had to be able to draw from city to city, draw people to the event. And they had to carry your promotion basically on their back from city to city. Nowadays, it's all TV wrestlers are lucky to wrestle three times a week now back in the old days they'd wrestle seven times a week so it was a totally different uh structure for pay structure for how they uh did business everything but josh is correct it's different how they do things um i want to so we're going to circle right back okay so we're going back to cody rhodes you you were talking about how you like how you like cody rhodes who doesn't like cody rhodes um he's coming off one of the best promos he's ever had on monday night raw him and paul Heyman. Roman Reigns, all these guys had a great uh, kind of face-off because Cody is facing off against Roman Reigns for the championship because he won the Royal Rumble. So Cody Rhodes, I predicted it on episode number 22. Someone even said it in the comments that, that I was gonna that I predicted it. So, yeah, I did because I'm a genius. <laughs> uh, I predicted that shit. And co- anyway, Cody's facing Roman for the belt. Hopefully, Cody wins the belt because here's another story. Cody, we've talked about on the show before, Kobe, Cody is heavily pushing for the winged eagle title belt to come back. So WWE, I read another story, they want to separate the titles. They want to have two distinct titles for each show again. And what better way than to bring the winged eagle, winged eagle back in all of its glory than to have Cody win it at WrestleMania? Their belts stink right now, man. They're, They're horrible. Like... They're oh, horrible. Man. We've already went over that in a past episode, but they're terrible. They have no character. They look like um something a child would be like. Smackdown is blue and <laughs> Raw is red. This belt looks the same, but it's on Raw, so Tell it's me. red. And this is Smackdown, and their colors are blue. <laughs> this is these are the colors, and that's why. That's that's the pitch right there to Bruce Pritchard and Vince. Oh God damn it! I love it. Smack <laughs> Smackdown is blue. It's that's the color of the belt. Yeah, you, uh, you see what I'm saying here? And, and Vince, uh, I know I know that you like oiled up Spartans and helmets. How about we just them. make that the tag belts? Uh, let's do it. And uh, since we're talking about Spartans, pal, uh, let's bring back Farouk. Yeah, and I want to put on that gladiator outfit. <laughs> Fuck the APA. I want Farouk. I want Judy Bagwell, and I want Chris Canyon in a forklift uh, on shit. a pole match. And I want shit in the LOD 2000 okay. with Tammy Sitch for the <laughs> WWE SmackDown Universal Championships versus Josh and Alex for the Slash Tracks Universal Championships. Yeah. Yeah. And, Whoever and, wins will carry all six belts for two years. And then we're going to morph them and, and morph them like the Power Rangers all in Voltron all into one mega belt. There you go. And Roman Reigns will carry all six titles <laughs> for the next favorite, few years. What's your favorite secondary belt from WWF, WCW? Mine is the United States title from the from WCW uh, before it got changed on WWE to like the American a, flag background. Yeah, it was a great title. But my favorite title is the IC belt, the Intercontinental Championship, from the late 80s, early 90s. Because whoever had that belt was usually – the guy who was going to be on the main event scene like a year or two down the road. And also it was the, the worker belt. So whoever was putting in the greatest uh, amount of work rate. So it was like Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect. All those guys tended to have the IC belt. I, I, I look at that belt now going back and watching like on the network. I call that the, that doesn't work for me, brother belt. Uh, whoever had the IC belt 
is who Vince wished he could put the main belt on, but Hogan would never agree to it. Yeah, so, Hogan's like, <laughs> Hogan, Hogan's like, listen here, dude. Here's a contract, brother. You see that? Creative control, dude. That doesn't work for me, man. So I'm heading down on my Harley with the 24-inch pythons, dude, to Venice Beach, California, where I'm going to one, two, three, Mr. Perfect's ass out of the ring, dude. I love Hogan, though. I really do. He was my hero growing up. And it's sad to know that right now he uh, he's not able to walk without a cane. He can't even feel his legs right now. So... Uh, he is having a real, yeah, I did see that. He's having a, I saw that he was doing a little bit better though. He was on raw. He actually was able to walk to the ring. Well, yeah, he's walking, but he can't feel most of his legs. And he, uh, I mean, the dude landed on his ass constantly. Yes. You know, the, the leg so drop. Stone cold. I mean, I can't imagine how he's faring right now. But, in hindsight, the hindsight. leg drop. <laughs> in hindsight, no pun intended. The leg drop was probably not the greatest, uh, move especially back in the old days slash alex because he's landing on his ass night after night city to city uh, compressing his spine over and over and over again probably not the best finishing maneuver um excited that cody might bring the wing title back and uh happy he won the royal rumble and a side note gunther uh i don't know if you're familiar with gunther yeah. he he was in he set the record for the actual royal for like the normal 30-man royal rumble not the 40-man he lasted like an hour and six minutes. He entered the ring at one, went all the way to the final with Cody, and eventually was eliminated by Cody. Um, but he is set he, the record. Is he the short, short, little pudgy guy that won the uh, 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 Money in the Bank when they wrestled on top of Titan Towers during COVID? No, 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 no. <laughs> You're thinking of uh, Otis. Oh, yeah! I like Otis. I like Otis. Yeah, Otis is doing nothing. He's in a tag team. Uh, Vince yeah, they, didn't really like him. His, the crowd was behind Otis, man. Yeah, he was so popular. He was every man. <clears throat> they got they they de pushed Otis and they fired Mandy Rose, who was like uh, who he was in love with because she had an OnlyFans that came out of nowhere, so she was fired. Um, let's get into another wrestling story. So, okay. Steve Austin and The Rock both turned down huge money offers for WrestleMania 39. So Austin was offered Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar. <laughs> So Stone Cold uh, turned them both down. I'm glad he did because he would have like showed up for the show. They would have been like, "All right, Brock's going over," and then Stone Cold would have taken his 52 year old oh. ball and went home. Well, he, he wishes he was 52. I think Stone Cold's actually like 58, uh, but he looks great. He did good though last year. He did really yeah, he, good. Yeah, dude, Stone Cold is still believable. If you follow his Instagram at all, he's on there every day working out. He's doing some crazy shit. He looks jacked. Um, I'm kind of bummed out that Stone Cold's not going to wrestle a match, but maybe they're hiding him. Maybe he will show up and wrestle. I think Stone Cold, though, is old school, and if it didn't make sense storyline going forward uh, to help further the company and the younger stars, I don't think Stone Cold's the type of guy that's going to show up and be like, I need to go over. He just doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, he, did, he won't do that. unless it, like, If it's going to help somebody by him winning and it makes sense, that's one thing, but if it's not going to help, like he's not going to show up, take a payday and just squash somebody yeah. because, because then they have to go forward and Stone Cold's not going to be there. It doesn't make sense. Um, and then the rock, uh, didn't, he just said, I, I'm not, I don't have enough time to get in ring shape. I just, it's just not possible. Cause he's so busy with all of his television, his movies, uh, his tequila <laughs> brand. John Cena looks deflated, man. He's like a, he's a, he's a commercial whore right now. At least, uh, the rock is doing real movies. <laughs> John Cena's doing, like, Rent.com and credit card commercials. Well, John Cena, man, uh, he's getting a little bit older, and he, he, I don't know if you've noticed, but he's going bald, too. Have you seen that? <laughs> Not that there's anything against bald people. I have no, I'm losing my hair. Uh, I have nothing against bald people. Me, too. He just shows up, and uh, he, but you know what? I No disrespect to John Cena at all. I'm going to take this to a totally different uh, place than I was going to. He shows up and puts people over. He, John Cena doesn't really win anymore. No. He only shows up to help people. I didn't like him in the beginning because he didn't wear ring gear. He wore tennis shoes. And, and jorts. Just, and jorts. Yeah, but yeah. He, 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 he earned my respect over time. All the Make-A-Wish stuff and everything. And uh, He's got the record. Yeah. So. He's made more wishes. You know what? You know, when somebody does something for somebody and expects absolutely nothing in return... Like, some people will help other people, but they're, maybe they'll get, like, 
money back down the road, or maybe they'll get something in return. John Cena was doing most of those make a wishes, like the majority of them off camera, and nobody had any idea that he was doing them. Um, what you do in private and in secret, uh, the good works you do, it, that impresses me more than somebody who's out there like, hey, look at me, look what I did. I gave this person money. I did this thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and how you treat people when you are going to get absolutely nothing in return says a lot about who you are as a person. So, yeah, John Cena is a good dude. I, 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 he's earned my respect. I wanted to say yeah. one thing about The Rock. I don't want to mess with the format too much. Um, but I, I've been watching Young Rock, and I really yeah, enjoy I, the show. I know you do. I, I think you'd like it, too. Um, I've, well, I've tried to watch it, but the casting throws me off, man. None of the guys look like the wrestlers. I mean, it's, it's hard to get people to look like wrestlers, but it, it's, it's still fun. But in the most recent episode, it was about when The Rock uh, was, like, IC champion, and they were at the Kill Rocky Kill, and he turned hill, and he started becoming a superstar, you know? Yeah, and die, then, Rocky, die, and he's pissed off. Yeah, um, it's funny. They the, the, the episode started, and he's telling the story, and it cuts back to, like, 1999 or whatever, and Vince McMahon comes to the locker room and says, hey, everybody, want to let you know our superstar Chad Frost over here, this black this black guy, uh, the he, he's going to have to give up the heavyweight title. He's injured, uh, so get ready. One of y'all is going to earn his spot. And everybody's like, who the fuck is Chad Frost, you know? Anyways, it turns out that Chad Frost was Shawn Michaels, uh, but The Rock didn't want to run anybody down on the show, so he changed his name. Because at the time, Shawn Michaels was in Vince's ear saying The Rock was too cocky, didn't deserve the spot, didn't have what mm -hmm. it takes. Uh, so The Rock went, took the moral high ground there. And didn't run Shawn Michaels into the ground because Shawn Michaels has become Michael Hickenbottom has become a better person uh, since then, and they've mended stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool that Dwayne didn't uh, take the low hanging fruit there. You know, he could have really bashed Shawn Michaels, but he chose not to. So uh, that, was, that is pretty cool. Um, Shawn Michaels though is on record for being a complete asshole. Back in the old days, the '80s and '90s, when he was having his run. Yeah. Uh, politicked his way to the top, which, you know what, I respect that a lot, but at the same time, it's like, do you really have to bury everybody on your way to the top? No. That's why I think um, it's kind of funny what Hogan did to him, but brother. <laughs> he did the same thing. It was, it was totally hypocritical. They did, they yeah. were doing, they both were politic kings, political kings. Um, I saw that Bret Hart uh, went out of his way to take uh, Dwayne, The Rock, under his wing and help him and mentor him and basically do everything Shawn Michaels didn't do. So Brett, Brett did. Brett was the world champion when he wrestled uh, Rocky Maivia in a met title versus title match. And I think that Shawn Michaels and Triple H had actually told Vince that Brett should beat uh, The Rock for the IC belt. And Brett's like, that makes no sense at all. Like, I think it would be better if we wrestled to like a draw, or yeah. I beat I beat him like on a countout or something. Like, yeah. it makes it makes him look like shit. If, if I beat him, from him. Yeah. yeah, it makes no sense. So the Brett, Brett was doing the complete opposite that Sean was doing. So uh, Brett takes a lot of shit because people say he's bitter, which he kind of is on a lot of aspects. I mean, he had a really rough go of it. He had a lot of shit. Yeah, well, I take, I take, no, he was born into it. Josh, he didn't really win the matches, family. though. He didn't win. He didn't lose. And I don't want to. Montreal Screwjob was a work. Oh, okay, Jim Ross. No, it wasn't a work. It was a work. Ask well, Jim Cornette. I don't give a shit. No, Jim Cornette knows it wasn't a work. Ask Scott, Scott Hall was the one saying it was a work. Because no, Jim Cornette's was... on Dark Side of the Ring straight up saying it was a work. Straight not, up. It's got good evidence. It's not, I don't, it was not a work. You tell us, people. Was it a work or was it not a work? Oh my what do you think? Poll. All right. All right. <laughs> We're going down a rabbit hole that we need to go for a Slash Tracks Wrestling special. All right. I'm so just fucking in. with you. I'm fucking with you. All right, let's you get into the last wrestling story of the show before I fucking come to Arkansas <laughs> and give you a rock bottom. All right. Here we go. Uh, and you're going to like this story because this is, your, this is your favorite stuff. On December 30th, 1998, over 25 years ago, Goldberg's 173-0 undefeated streak came to an end in WCW. My dad about had a heart attack that night. He was Goldberg fan all the way. I was NWO black and white. Everybody hated me when we went to her. We would always have a pay-per-view party every every month, WCW pay-per-view party. And I would always wear my NWO black and white Hollywood shirt. 
Yeah. And they hated it. And uh, when Kevin Nash, uh, when Scott Hall zapped Goldberg and beat him, I was like, in your face, Dad! With the and cattle I, prod. And I was like, I guarantee they're all going to get back together. And the next night was the finger poke of doom, and I was right. Um, I was like, it was all planned to, to beat Goldberg. It doesn't make any sense, but it was all a plan. So. Uh, he, like Kevin Nash, didn't he have, wasn't he the booker at that point at yeah. that time? So Kevin Nash was writing the storylines. Uh, so it's kind of convenient that he wrote himself into defeating Goldberg and ending the streak. Well, he um, had to because there was no more Egyptians to worship him. So, you know. <laughs> Kevin, they should have not ended the streak that way. But, I mean, at least he wasn't beaten clean. But the problem by them beating him is as soon as they beat him, that was it. Goldberg's, the mystique of Goldberg was over. They should have rode that train a little bit longer. I'm honestly surprised Hogan didn't uh, petition to beat Goldberg. In a way, he did because Kevin Nash beat him, and then Hogan pulled out the creative control clause the next day mm -hmm. and said he wanted to beat Nash. Nash came up with the finger poke thing because he didn't want to go out there and lose clean to Hogan. It was all backstage fighting at that point. Well, when Hogan when Hogan beat or excuse me when Hogan lost to Goldberg when Goldberg won the WCW Heavyweight Championship uh, World Championship on Nitro, Hogan put over Goldberg clean. Right. Yeah. Because and Hogan also put uh, used his creative control to insert himself into that match. But also Hogan was convinced that he or he either spun it or was convinced by management that down the road he was going to get his win back. And I heard that was the only reason that Hogan put over Goldberg on Nitro. Have you ever heard, heard that? I've heard that he saw a lot in Goldberg and it was just one of the rare times that Hogan did something uh for somebody else, but I do think that he would have uh, wanted to get that win back later. I think he probably wanted it, and Kevin Nash didn't let him have it, so he took he did it before Hogan could weasel his way into it. Because I think Nash knew it wasn't a good idea, but then it made Nash look bad because he had the pencil, and then Hogan beat Nash the next night with a finger poke, and it's all history. That was uh, that was some of the most. Uh, Horrible booking uh, right, uh, and storytelling, <laughs> and it all happened within like one week yep. in WCW. Two days, and, two days, Sunday, and Monday. Yeah, and it didn't help that they're doing that kind of bullshit while they're merging with uh, AOL, Time Warner, and then the market went in the chitter, and like all these, it's like all these little bad decisions led to the, you know, eventually the merger happened and then they were like, you know what? Like, we're losing money on this wrestling show. We're just going to get rid of it. And that's it was still their highest rated show at the end, Alex. Even at the end, it was their highest rated show on TNT on Monday nights. Highest rated. Better than uh, Joe Bob Briggs on. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what was it? What was his show? Monster on Vision. Monster Vision. <laughs> Man, Monster Vision was the first time I ever saw Return of the Living Dead. Boy, that was great. TNT used to be the shit, man. Nitro, Monster Vision, lots of great movies. For me and you growing up in the 90s, uh, TNT was a good channel. Joe Bob really inspired a lot of what the slasher librarian character is. You know, like I narrate the books and then I talk about the chapters and everything. Yeah. There's a and lot you, of Joe Bob there. So. And, and you guys both love, you're both from the South. Uh, I've never Arkansas. seen you. Yeah, I've never seen you wear a bolo tie before, though. <laughs> I'll do it when I'll dress up like Joe Bob. Okay. I'd love to you, interview him sometime. Do you eat it the Cracker Barrel often? Because Joe Bob loves it. Not since I found out that the the design is a whip <laughs> at the end. It's kind of weird. So Yeah, he's got some connotations <laughs> there, maybe. Uh, the food Josh, doesn't taste so good anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, this tastes <clears> horrible. No, it, Josh, it get biscuits. Yeah. we are getting in to the brand new segment for the show. Would you rather? So this is a brand new section segment for the show, Slashaholics. Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Comment yeah! below. Hey, all right. Uh, and also, uh, a little bit of channel business real quick. Uh, if you want to leave us a would you rather question that you have for us for the next episode, write us at slashtracks2020 at gmail.com. And Josh, hit us with the Patreon real quick. Patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. All right, and if you guys want to be a Patreon member, get special access to uh, shows, uh, Slash Tracks, Express, stuff a lot before of e anybody on there else. Too. 
Slasher yeah. oh, yeah. ebooks available. Tons of stuff. Uh, for as little as one dollar a month, you can become a Patreon member. Josh, first, would you rather of Slash Tracks News uh, history? Here we go. Josh, would you rather spend one night in 1428 Elm Street, or would you rather spend one night at Camp Crystal Lake? Uh, what night is it? They're they're actively hunting, Josh. Freddie and Jason are it's out Friday and about. The 13th. Wow. Okay. Uh, I guess I would say a, I'd say a night at fourteen twenty eight Elm Street because really? I, I I shit you not and I've got a wife as a witness and friends as witnesses I can I have the I have like a dream power almost I can take control of my dreams at any time if I'm not digging my dream I'm able to lucid dream like a snap of a finger yeah and uh, I think that it would if I'm gonna die I'd rather die trying to out Freddy Freddy in a nightmare. He's going to know what you're going to do before you do it. He's in control of everything. You don't think that he wants you to think that you can control it? I'm just saying, like, Jason's going to catch me no matter how fast I run. And I'm not too quick anymore. Well, but, yeah, uh, with that attitude. <laughs> with that attitude, he will catch you. Josh, I'm going to say I would rather spend a night at Camp Crystal Lake. Okay. You want to know why? Just I don't, don't drink. Don't drink, don't have sex. I don't drink. Yeah, I, I don't have sex, not by choice. Uh, no, I, every once in a while, Mother Evil and I get it on. But uh, <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell Master Evil that. Um, is, no, he, is the rodeo clown in, in like watching from the barrel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't have sex. Jason's not on me for that. Don't do drugs. Uh, I think I'm good, man. But... Uh, I'm telling you, and I have a Halloween outfit. I could dress up like a dog. Jason doesn't kill animals. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could be a furry for one night, Camp Crystal Lake. Although, aren't furries, isn't that a sexual thing? So maybe Jason would confuse it and kill my ass anyway? Not anymore. There's, there's like two different sets of furries now. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. One's, one's sexual, one's just people that identify and uh, like to dress up as animals and i'm cool okay. with that if that's your okay. bag you do you you do you girlfriend whatever like, man i'm not judging anybody i'm just saying whether jason would kill me or not i could care less um depends on how adorable you are <laughs> yeah i think uh i think i would definitely do one night at camp crystal lake because i think that you know okay so you're either going against supernatural jason so you you probably don't really have that good of a chance because he's able to to morph he's able to uh what is it called where he goes from place to place. What is that word? Teleport. He can teleport. So you're kind of fucked. But if it's Jason in the 2009 remake, he's got a system of tunnels with bells and stuff. So you kind of got a chance, right? You kind of got a chance. Um, I would say just get your your best chance. What You just have to be faster than whoever you're with, right? Yeah. So you got a chance. If, if you're in Freddy's dream world, you are fucked. He's, anything that happens, he's controlling it. You don't know, like, you think, you think you're hiding. He knows exactly where you're at. We've already established this. I'd make him think that I don't know what I'm doing, and then I'd bust something out, you know? I, what do you I, mean I, you'd make him think? He knows you're trying to do that. It's not like you're a genius. He's aware of what you're doing. He might not be. He might, um, if I play the part right, he'll think I'm just a scared dude, and then all of a sudden I bust out some guns and stuff, grab him, wake up, and you're gonna and grab hopefully, some... hopefully this version of Freddy, Alex, if I yeah. bring him into the real world... He's going to start screaming because of all of his nerve burns, damage and burns. His terrible burns. You're going to bring out some guns. So you're basically, you think you're the phantom prowler from Dream Child. How did he turn out, Josh? How did he do? I'll pull Ash into my dreams, okay? And and, uh, and then I got it. So. I told you, Josh, comic books was bad for you. <laughs> all right, so Josh and I are totally split. What would the Slashaholics do? Would you guys rather spend one night at 1428 Elm, or would you rather spend one night at Camp Crystal Lake? Leave your comments down below. Hey, Beth. Beth. Would you rather spend one night at Camp Crystal Lake or one night at Freddy's house? You're going to have to face off against them one way or the other. Crystal Lake. Really? She picked Crystal Lake. She's smart. <laughs> water oh water she can swim real good good so. she's well jason obviously doesn't need to swim he can walk on the fucking bottom of the lake like he's the on, ocean <laughs> yeah mario brothers 3 where he's swimming under the battleship on level eight world eight i, I picked freddie because i can control my dreams so 
Yeah, so could Kristen, t- and that worked out real well for her, too. She ended up in a fucking boiler burning to death. <laughs> Alex, this is what you'd be saying, right? You think you got him. You're like, Alex, you'll need my powers. And then all of a sudden your powers will transfer to me and I'll be like, Alex, and then I'll have long hair. <laughs> that's that's my power. Right. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, fucking A. <laughs> and I can do nunchucks. At least right, your decapitated God. head will look good. Oh. <laughs> and, and Jason Shack. Alex, you'll need my powers. I'm fucking dead because I'm a dummy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> your hair pops off your head like a Lego uh, <laughs> set of hair, like a Lego head. All right. <laughs> let's get into Slash Tracks Horror. Let's do it. All right. Sony is relaunching I Know What You Did Last Summer on the heels of Scream's recent box office uh, box office success. Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. are both in talks to return to the franchise. This is so stupid. Yep. The third, they made a third one. Like called, I'll always know what you still did last spring, summerish, fall, somewhere in there. I'm Anyways, not as dumb as. They made a third one where they took the guy from the first two, from the first one, and pretty much turned him, the Hookman, into like a vengeful spirit that travels anywhere in the country mm-hmm. to help people, to to go after people, and it's like it makes no sense. This, please, no. Is Jack Black gonna come back? Jack Black was he in? The- he was what? in the second one. He was the pothead guy. He's like, wasn't oh, he, please don't kill me. Don't kill me. He wasn't even credited, man. He wasn't even was, credited. Was he killed in part two? Dude, I watched he part was, two once. He had a Jamaican accent and everything. It was bad. It was so bad. He must have needed a role to keep his uh, insurance with SAG or something. That must be the only reason he took that role. Um, I know what you did last summer was totally a scream ripoff. I remember being sort of entertained by it. I mean, it was okay. Um, but I didn't really feel bad for um, the heroes of the movie because they covered up a murder. They're, they they killed that guy, right? I don't care if Jennifer Love Hewitt said, let's not do it or not. She was involved with it. She could have told the cops at any point, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I, I don't know. And also, my first thought when I when I heard this was like, well, yeah, of course, Freddie Prince Jr. and Jennifer Love Hewitt want to do it. They haven't done shit in like 20 years like, she's only been on Lifetime movies, and, like, wasn't she on the Ghost show where she could, like, talk to ghosts on, like, yeah, CBS ghost, or something? Ghost Whisper on CBS. But Freddie Prince, Freddie Prince Jr. has been steadily employed for the past, like, 20 years. And for I'm writing, for, for writing WWE. Yeah, right. No, he's not with WWE anymore, but he was. He was a writer. But he hasn't done any movies or anything. Like, he's just waiting for Scooby-Doo to get rebooted or fucking I know what you did. He hasn't done shit. He voices uh, Fred in the cartoons now. What does that pay? Ask, ask the guy that I think is going to be the killer in Scream 6. Because he Jack still Black? voices Shaggy. Oh, Who? Matthew Lillard. Matthew yeah. Lillard. It's got to be Matt. If he's not the killer in Part 6, then all the cool stuff that's actually got me interested in Part 6, which I can't believe I'm interested in it, but the gun in New York. I'm and the ready mask. For it. The mask being dirty as fuck and yeah, old it, and weathered. I think mm. it's going to be Stu. I really do. So and so do I. I and think it's I. Be fun. I agree with you, Josh, and I don't want to see, like, I don't even care about the reveal. I, I just, I'd like to know if it was him from the get-go, to be honest with you. I, I'll be rooting for him. Kill what Gale. If, what if, like, uh, that big collection they find is, like, the killer's collection, and Stu is, like, a prisoner there, and they, like, save him, and just to find out that he was the, I don't know, it feels like they'll try to do a fake out with Stu if it's what him. What collection? What are you talking about? There's like a, in the trailer, there's like a clip where they're like in a room that all this fucking like ghost face memorabilia okay. is behind cases and stuff. I don't remember seeing that, but um, I have a hard time. Matthew Lillard was rumored to be in part five and they even went back to his house from the original Scream movie. Uh, I just feel like they, since the turnaround for the production of Scream 6 was so quick after Scream 5, I feel like he signed on. And fully, like, either he was going to be the killer in five, and, like, it was like a wrestling return that, like, it was like a badly kept secret. So they're like, we'll just put him in part six instead. Like, or maybe they knew all along, and they used him as a red herring for five, but knowing they were going to use him in six. What Does if, that make uh, sense? Yeah. What if uh, Sydney didn't really have kids? You never saw the babies in the, the stroller thing she was pushing. 
So what Sydney's if she completely just lost it. <laughs> yeah, Sydney's just totally batshit crazy at this yeah, point. She, she's, yeah, she. It would make sense at this point. All the shit she's been through. I maybe. just hope Gail dies because Dewey should never die. And if he did die, it shouldn't have been a tiny little girl like eviscerating him from like belly and like tailbone all the way up to his chin. That made no sense. Yeah, from asshole to his mouth, she like split him. Like she like field dressed him like a I want a slash tracks part five brother I really do I hope we get that one sometime but part six I'm actually interested in seeing yeah I'm probably gonna like it so all right so we both think uh, I know what you did last summer is gonna be a shitter next story final destination two was first released on January 31st 2003 20 years ago what are your thoughts on final destination two do you remember seeing it for the first time uh did you like it yeah, I saw it in theaters. Uh, I really liked that uh, Clear Rivers uh, was back. I didn't like that she died, and I didn't like that she was, like, in a nut house. And I didn't like how they killed off the uh, uh, dude from the first movie uh, by saying a brick fell on him. He was just, like, walking by a building, and a brick fell. It's like a little newspaper clipping in the movie. That Devin says Sawa? That, yeah, his character died because a brick fell off of a building and hit him in the head. Um but I like the ending of, of that one, and I love uh, some of the effects, like the, the guy that gets uh, cut with all the wire and the oh, yeah. that gets smashed by the glass. If you pause the glass right before it lands on him, you can see the dummy standing there, though. It's pretty fun. Well, you know, 2003 technology, that was pretty good. Uh, I have forever been terrified to drive behind a log truck now because of that Me movie. Too. Okay. Anytime you're behind a, a log truck with a bunch of like you know timber, a bunch of trees and shit, it's like uh, I'm thinking twice, man, because that tree is gonna come right through the windshield, take fucking take my ass out. But luckily, Josh has a dream power. His beautiful hair, it would block the log. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh. Uh, next horror story, buddy. Robert England has a documentary coming, and uh, it's actually gonna be be released in theaters first. So that's kind of that's rare for a documentary like this to be released in theaters. Hollywood Dreams and Nightmares, the Robert England story. Uh, it's bought by, or it's produced by Cinedigm. Cine, oh my God, C I N E D I G M, Cinedigm or whatever. Uh, acquired <laughs> North American rights, and they're going to give it an exclusive theatrical run before the documentary hits uh, Screenbox in late spring. I want to so, see that. That's going to be good. That'll be good. You know, Robert England is a really interesting guy. He has some of the weirdest stories about Hollywood from the 70s and 80s. And he tends to be very elaborate and kind of long-winded with some of his stories. He name drops a lot. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I, I, I get it. You know, he's getting older. and he, he even, But even back when he was younger, and like Freddie makeup, when they're putting it on him, he'd sit there and talk about his glory days Yeah. Uh, before that. Yeah. Um, I think he's a genuine person. I reached out to him a couple years ago, and yeah. he was sick at the time with the flu, and his wife wrote me back and said he wasn't going to be doing any interviews or things in, until later than COVID happened. Um, I think I'm going to try to reach out again at some point, man. Um, <laughs> I'd got love Robert to meet him or talk to him. Yeah. You got Robert England for getting sidetracked. That would be – you just end the show right after that. There's no – no you, no, you would go no higher than that. Um no, I was just, I just imagine Robert England telling, like, you know, there I was at uh, Club F Studio 54 with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, someone, f who, who am I, Sissy Spacek, and we were talking about Coal Miner's daughter, and then uh, the waiter, the maitre d' was actually, uh, just told me that he'd parked my 1977 uh, coupe, and uh, they were serving a nice little uh, shrimp scampi, and when all of a sudden... Tammy Wynette walked in the door, and we discussed uh, doing a country album uh, together in the future. It was a it was a crazy time. Uh, <laughs> then Mark you Hamill watched that, that interview that one night from that small channel, and that's all it was. There was no, no Freddie mentioned at all. It was just him telling stories. <laughs> him telling ridiculous stories about Hollywood people. Um, hey, next story: Scream Six. So the one Josh and I just talked to talked about. It's going to be the first entry in the Scream franchise to be released in 3D. Oh, my God. <laughs> you excited still now, Josh? No. How excited are you, for, are you for it now, bud? I'm still going to watch it. Probably won't watch it in 3D, but I do want to let everybody know on the channel, uh, before I had 
my TIA, I was going to uh, edit a version of Slash Tracks number 32 where we watch Friday the 13th Part 3. I'm still going to do that and get the 3D version up where all you need is like the little cardboard blue and red glasses. I've got 50 pairs of those ready to ship out to uh, subscribers. So as soon as we get that one live, I'll uh, let people sign up for the glasses. Let's be free. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as far as the 3D effect, though, I don't think Scream 6 needs it. And, I, and they're calling it Scream again. It's like that's three movies in the six called Scream. Well, they changed the color of one of the letters, Josh. Oh, my God. Never mind. You're right. That's <laughs> totally Very different. Super original, Josh. Um, let's get into headlines, man. Last, last segment of the show, bud. I don't need any headlines, but we'll do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I know. You've had enough issues uh, for the last month or two. You don't need don't headlines to boot. I don't have to cut my hair yet. I'm thinking Dude. about it. I might do a poll, see if y'all want me to cut my hair or not. We'll Josh, see. head lice would have a utopia in your scalp, bud. They would have places to build, to live, to have babies, to to have a future. God, what a beautiful place for head lice, and you're going to ruin it. All right. But before we get in the last segment, got to do some channel business. Slash tracks, 2020 at gmail.com. If you're still with us and you're still watching the episode, you like what you see, you've had a good time, you've laughed, uh, you're a company, you're a business, you want to sponsor us, you want to work with us in the future, you want to be a, a title sponsor on an episode, get a hold of us at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, give us your pitch. Uh, tell us why you think you, you'd be a good fit and why we would help uh, further your brand, whatever. And if we like it, maybe we can do something in the future. Anyway, first headline of the, our <laughs> first headline of the last segment of the show. Let's do it. A new bill proposed would let prisoners trade their organs for a reduced prison sentence. New bill proposed in Massachusetts would give prisoners anywhere from 60 days to one year off their sentence. And this includes bone marrow or, or, or organs. What are your thoughts, Josh? I think if they save a life, that's, that's a form of restitution, in my opinion. Um, there's actually been... Uh, convicts that are in prison for life and some on death row over the years that have donated organs uh, because they thought it's one good thing they could do. So if, if there's like a boon for doing it, uh, yeah, I think, I think that would be paying their due. I think that, I think that might work. Not in all, not in all cases, but in some. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you 100% because you've never heard of uh, serial killers donating like their eyes or fingers or stuff, and then that oh, no, taking... serial killer needs to stay in prison forever. Well, I'm just, just talking about like well, hold petty on. And shit. Uh, these are bad guys, and they're donating organs or eyeballs or tissues or whatever. They're going to donate it to somebody, Josh, and then that that part of the body is going to take over the normal person's body, and they're going to start killing people. Is this headlines or the sci-fi section of the show? Both. It's both. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm just saying we got to look out for this because if you donate the serial killers anything, that might take over the normal person's body and start killing them. If I go to jail, I'll donate my hair to you since you're going bald, and then I'll get out. I'm not completely going bald, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I have a receding hairline. So do I. Yeah, sure you do. You beautiful bastard. Uh, what a dream power to have, man. Gorgeous locks. That is a fantastic power. Josh, second headline. Now, this is breaking news, Josh. Breaking, <laughs> totally fresh, brand new story. <laughs> Colonel Sanders would often make visits to Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants, and if he was unhappy with the food, he would throw it on the floor while cussing out the employees. Breaking news. Colonel Sanders, been dead for quite a while. This breaking is totally news. fresh. <laughs> yeah, this is breaking news. What are your thoughts on Colonel Sanders treating uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken employees like shit and throwing the food on the floor and cussing at them? I would have loved to have seen that, man. I've heard about a certain leader that we had in the past that would get mad and throw hamburgers against the wall, uh, but it wasn't stuff that he made. Uh, but I would like, I would love to see black and white grainy footage of the colonel showing up. I say, I say, this chicken is not crispy. <laughs> Give me, uh, and that original is you flash fried it and it's still cold on the inside. I say, I'm gonna throw it at you. You know, I'd like <laughs> to see that. And what do you mean, what, what are you talking about Pepsi products, goddammit? We don't want Pepsi products in the, in the Colonel's place. We need Coca-Cola like it was in the 80s, son. <laughs> I uh, say that Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi. 
Dude, the, the Colonel Sanders, uh, this is a little piggyback on Colonel here. When he first started his chicken restaurants, I, I'm almost positive, because I watched a documentary on this guy. He started his chicken restaurants at, like, gas stations in the South, and he would, like, be have the gas station, but he'd, like, put two tables out front of a gas station. So his, the restaurant would have two tables, and he'd be serving his fried chicken out of the gas station. And it kind of just grew from there. Yeah. It Isn't worked that bizarre? out. Yeah. It worked out, though. I mean, um, good for him, man. He he sold the rights to the Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, recipe and, and the name, image, and likeness and everything, like, in the 70s or 80s. So he wasn't even the main guy for quite some time. Uh, and I he didn't really get as much as I thought he would. It was, like, millions. And he was signed on to just be the spokesperson. So he sold the business and then was just signed on to be, like, uh like Eric Bischoff was in the WWE, just just talent, not uh, not head of creative for KFC anymore. Is it weird that I uh, took the Colonel and somehow gave him the voice of Foghorn Leghorn? Yeah, <laughs> well, I, from Looney Tunes. No, because that's how I envisioned his voice to be as well. And I, you know what? Is it weirder that I didn't even question it? I say, <laughs> I I just, say yeah. you can just fry the chicken, but don't fry this chicken. <laughs> Colonel. My grandpa absolutely. Grandpa Ralph loved uh, Foghorn Leghorn. That was That's like some not of his... a chicken hawk. Uh, yeah, all right. All right, man. Next headline: China has uh, reportedly made an app that you can get on your phone to show people if they're standing near someone who's in debt, and this is a new part of its intrusive social credit policy. This—that's a weird one. That is a weird one. It's actually just uh, an app that beeps constantly because there's not a person on this planet that doesn't have debt. Yeah, it's like <laughs> if that if that whoever had that app on their phone stand stands next to me, the notifications would be going off like fucking crazy. It would sound like an alarm clock in the morning. I'd be like, oh, so this person knows I'm broke too. Great, they must have the new app <laughs> on their I phone. Don't want to let this story balloon or anything, you know. I think it's. Uh... It's good where it's at. I think uh, everybody's got some debt, so it'd just be beeping constantly. Uh, next to me, it would probably be like, beep. <laughs> it so- <laughs> like, sounds like a metal detector when it's next to me and you. Um, this kind of sounds like Squid Game a little bit. It does. It? That's a little weird. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like Squid Game. Is the next app where you can sign up to compete in games where you can be murdered uh, to erase your debt? I mean, what's going on here? Um, We're heading to a future that's mixed with Handmaiden's Tale and Squid Games. And Hunger <laughs> Games. Yeah, it's like all three. Um, hey, Josh, last month, Rolling Stone ranked Michael Jackson as the 86th greatest singer of all time. 86th. Wow. Of all time. That's I was going to tell you as, as a fun fact about him tonight that his nephew is going to play him in a biopic, uh, Jermaine Jackson's son. Okay. Looks just like 80s Michael Jackson, so it's crazy you brought him up. But I can't believe he ranked so low. I would hope yeah. Hugh Williams and Elvis ranked higher. What? You think Elvis sang better than Michael Jackson? I'm just saying I hope that they were on the list. Oh, decent okay. numbers. okay. I think Hank Williams was a great singer and songwriter. He was like one of the best songwriters of that period. My like grandpa loved Hank Hank Williams. I have no disrespect towards Hank Williams. My grandpa also loved Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, but they're not better than Michael Jackson. Uh, Michael, Michael Jackson should have been in the top ten, man. I feel like they did this because of all the accusations and stuff yeah. against him. They were trying to rewrite history. It's like one mm-hmm. thing has nothing to do with the other thing. Uh it's like the alleged uh, stuff that, you know, I don't even want to get into it, but like it definitely has made people look at Michael Jackson through a different lens. All that. We've got to look at it as a mu- as musical talent only and separate right. it. Cause yeah. Yeah. You've got to do that or you're never going to be able to enjoy a movie or a TV show or song Towards again. Anything. Because everybody has done something, with, you know, that's, that's going to take away from what they put out. I think before we end that uh, that story real quick, I think it's major disrespect. Eighty six, ridiculous. Michael Jackson had major major range, uh, beautiful singing voice. Uh, I think maybe the fact that he was such a good dancer and performer might take away from how good of a singer he was, actually, because they might view him as like the total package as opposed to just singing. 
And it's kind of a disrespectful number, too, because they gave him, uh, like, 86 is, like, gone, you know? That's 86. We're 86 and Michael. I don't know. It's just a weird number. Josh, I can't even think of 20 people that are better singers than Michael Jackson. But, you know, totally ridiculous. Uh, The internet was outraged, so as they should be. Um, Second to last story of the show. OnlyFans superstar, Ayella, was the top grossing star on the OnlyFans platform in 2022. She brought in reportedly $100,000 a month, and she just recently admitted that in 2022, the year she set the record, was the top top performer for OnlyFans, uh, that she only showered 37 times that year. Were people asking for, like, her... To send, like, her underwear and stuff or something? I, I didn't see anything like that. Or dirty feet pictures or whatever. Um, if she's got this much money coming in, man, she can afford a bar of soap. There's no excuse. Uh, she can afford maybe hot water. Maybe she's a fart robot. <laughs> yeah, she, maybe she's just a... Yeah, she's a robot. Uh, Josh and the real girl. She's just a sexual app. She's... Hey, we're going to do a callback. We're going all the way back to fun facts. She was sent by the Norwegian government for Josh to have one of his 11 orgasms. It's not a real person. Yeah. The government funding finally came in, bud. There you go. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) We're in luck. Yeah. But no, 37 showers, that's kind of, that's a borderline mental health uh, crisis situation. Like, you're showering 37 times a year. That's not even once a week. Yeah, that's that's bad. I I mean, I don't... Technically, Josh. humans aren't supposed to shower every day, but no, we do. And, but uh, every other day, probably a better number, because um, you don't want to wash off all the actual good bacteria from your body. Yeah. But yeah, 37 times, that's taking it. That's like uh, Matthew McConaughey not using deodorant. It's probably uh, going to make her more money, honestly, people knowing that. There's a lot of people that are probably going to be into that. So. Yeah, they're going to have big old heart eyes, and they're like, ooh, baby. Uh, I need to contact the Norwegian government and sign up for her OnlyFans. All right, last story of the show, Josh. It's been a long one. Here we go. It's okay. Here we go, Josh. McDonald's customer was given a bag with thousands of dollars in cash instead of food at the drive-thru. Uh, he returned the money because I'm a good person. He was rewarded $200. And free food for a month. That's the last story of the show, pal. He's a he's a Mick idiot. He's a McDumbass. He should have Mick took the money and Mick fucking ran. <laughs> they prob what it, what do you think that was? The drop for the day previous day's business or something? Probably. Like oh whatever God. they took in cash or something. Hey Josh. Oh, did, did the receipt say uh, thousands of dollars? <laughs> like uh, what's up? No, I was just gonna say quick story. When I was like 11, I got a sandwich from McDonald's. It had blood on it. So somebody cut their finger and got blood all over the wrapper. My mom took me back to the McDonald's. Um, Instead of suing them or whatever, they invited me back to an all-you-can-eat day and gave me every McDonald's toy they had from the Happy Meals. And at the time, it was the Power Rangers movie toys. Oh, so, man, the ones where you set, where they set inside of yeah, the things? Yeah, I got all of them. And Do you still my, have them? I don't have them anymore. And then my friend that I brought, because I could bring one friend, we each got, you know, one of each of the of the toys, and we got to eat as much McDonald's as we wanted. So I just ate like a little fat kid. But in hindsight, my mom was a financial dum-dum. Uh, probably should have sued him. Yes. Yeah. Like, like my aunt, we went out to eat uh, CeCe's Pizza one night whenever I was a teenager. She found a bloody Band-Aid in her spinach pizza. And instead of suing them, she accepted free pizza for a year. Um, how many more Band-Aids, Band-Aids did she Band-Aids. Yeah, how many more Band-Aids did she find in those free pizzas? Uh, entertain the crowd for just a second. Your story inspired me before you leave. I want to bring I think these are the ones you're talking about. Got the crane. Got the. I got all of them. These are the only ones I can find. Then my prize one is Tommy and the Falcon Zord. Oh my. Him? Oh yes, and that's the one that. That's the one that I. I didn't bleed for it. Some fucker at McDonald's bled for it, but that's how I got it. Uh, some guy bled all over my freaking McChicken for me to get that beautiful, beautiful toy. It's worth it. You should go get them on eBay, man, for sure. Oh, I'm. Uh, Oh, no, I'm definitely going to hop on eBay after this to see what they go for. Cause I, def- I definitely want the white, the white Ranger for sure. Oh, yeah, that one's great. Well, is that the, the last show. In the show. 
We're done. All right. Be sure to go to uh, the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month and help us keep this show and the channel growing and going for years to come. Be sure to hit us up at the email slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to get involved in our new segments or just have a question or sponsorship uh, opportunity, we're always checking it. So uh, hit us up and let us know. Um, until next time, thank you all so much for being so awesome. Be excellent to each other. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. I will. Uh, ask Slashy advice. Would you rather me and Josh are going to debate? You guys can be part of the show. Send in the comments. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog.